Here's an example of how to factor a trinomial equation. Here we have an equation in the form ax squared plus, b, or plus bx plus c equals zero. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and factor this by using the x factor. Don't forget, whenever we have an equation, it has to equal zero in order for it to work. So we'll factor this by using the x factor, then we're gonna go ahead and use a zero product property to figure out what x is. So in order to get this started, I'm gonna focus on just this part of the equation that equals zero. Using the x factor, I go ahead and write my a times c on the top. a times c is gonna give me negative six. My b plus on the bottom, that's gonna be negative five, so I have to figure out what two numbers multiply to get me negative six and add to get me negative five. Um, well, the first thing I would probably think of is two times three. If they're negative, then they'll add up to be negative five, but the problem is if they're both negative, then it's gonna get me a positive six, so that one's not gonna work. Let me try one and six. If I do one times six, then if my six is negative and my one is positive, it'll get me a negative six when I multiply and a negative five when I add. So I think these are the numbers that I wanna look for. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those numbers in my box. And I'm gonna go ahead and put them in my box with the first and last term. So the first and last terms of your original trinomial is going to go in the first and last box of the box method that we use. So here we'll have three x squared and then the negative two, since it's the first and last terms. And then what we have in our x factor, we're gonna put in the other two terms because these terms are our third term or our second term here, our x value. So these have to add up to get us the x value, which is our negative six x and one x. And the cool thing is it does not matter the order. You can put the negative six x up here if you want to, it's not gonna change your answer. So once you do that, in order to get what's on the outside of the box, you have to think, what are the factors? Let's look for the GCF. So in order to get the GCF up here, you have to line them up. What is the GCF of these two terms? The greatest common factor. So think about that for a second. What is the biggest number that divides into three and six? Well, I know that's gonna be three, but you can't stop there. You have to look at the variables as well. So the biggest number, I'm sorry, the value that they share is an x. Whenever you look at the value they share, you have to look at the smallest exponent, which is one. So three x is gonna go on the top. X has to go on the side because these two have to multiply in order to get what's on the inside here. Um, then I think X times what gives me X? Well, that would be one. X times one gets me X. If I wanna put a little one in front of this X, that's up to you. Doesn't matter, doesn't change your answer. Then I have to think uh, three X times what gets me negative six X. So three times negative two would get me negative six. Then you can double check your answer by looking at this. One times negative two gets me negative two, so that's perfect. So I go ahead and take what I have on the outside and that becomes my answer. So that is three x plus one, x minus two equals zero. So we have to put the equal zero because our original question says equal zero. When it has equal zero, you have to use a zero product property. The zero product property states that if you have two factors multiplying together to equal zero, both of them have to equal zero. So I'm gonna set this three x plus one equal to zero and the x minus two equal to zero. If I had room to show my work, I would subtract one on both sides, then divide my answer by three, and I would get x equals negative one third as one of my answers. And then over here, I would add two to both sides. And then x plus, I'm sorry, that'll be x equals two. x equals two will be my final answer. And we talked in class about the reason why we have two answers in this equation is because it's a parabola. Not necessary for us to know yet, but it is good information. So in a parabola, if this were a graph, it's going through the x-axis twice. Wherever it goes through the x-axis, that's what our answer is going to be. So that's what we're looking for. So because we have two different answers in two different spots, that's what the different numbers are. 
That's where it crosses the x-axis, and that's going to come and be very important in the next chapter. So hopefully this helps. I will be posting another example of when this does not equal zero and how we make it equal zero.